Hello, welcome back, Fred in the Shed. We're up in a chilly radio shack this morning. And another video on this Retivess RA79, otherwise known as the UVK5, uh, the Quan Shang, Quen Shing, Quan Shong. I don't know how you pronounce it. I haven't got a bloody clue. I know a couple of you said I pronounced it wrong on the last video. Well, I've heard it pronounced all differently on the internet. Quan Shang. It's basically the UV. K5, a radio that is incredibly popular right now on the uh, internet in general. So much so, this Retivest version has sold out already. In fact, before I even got the first video up, I did check, and it's currently sold out on Amazon. I believe you can still buy this version on the main Retivest site, and I think the, uh, the, the paired radios with the mic speaker mic for about 50 quid, less discounts and whatnot, so probably say 45 quid, that was available. And a few of you said, Fred, you know, nice radio, but why not just buy the cheaper versions, um, clones, or if, if you like. And I was really surprised. A few of you said that you'd picked them up from AliExpress. I think the cheapest one was £12. Can you believe that? £12 for a little version of this radio. And you said, well, Fred, you know, there's, there's no point in buying a more expensive version because I can almost get three radios for the same price. I'm going to flash the firmware and uh, if the radio bricks, well, it bricks, but, you know, I'll have three to play with. And, I, you know, I totally get that. I totally get it. I mean, it's incredible how cheap this has become. I knew it would become cheap, but 10 or 12 quid for a radio. And a couple of you said it's probably the same board. It's all probably made on the same production line. Yeah, you're probably right. I, I suppose the only thing is with, I say, with the uh, the proper versions, the Quan Xing and the Retivest, which I think the Quan Xing is about, what, £25, £26, supposedly, if it's a genuine. This, this one's a little bit more, about 35 something like that. I, th I think you just get, you probably do get nice, nicer plastics. It has a nice feel to it battery you know i don't know but yeah i get what you're saying if you can pick one of these up for 12 quid good luck to you and as i say if you brick it it doesn't really matter so does it i haven't it? um flashed this one yet i've kept it standard because when i was out testing on doing the pmr stuff i just happened to pick up some aircraft and i'll play you the clip in, in a moment and i was really surprised how well this picked up aircraft just with the standard UHF and VHF antenna and um, with, with aircraft normally what you get are very very small exchanges of communications I mean seconds they don't hang about but on that particular clip um, there was quite a long prolonged conversation on the airband which was unusual so I recorded it on my phone and I just grabbed my phone I did it in the sort of portrait format format so what I've done I've uploaded that as a short video because I'd done it the wrong way around by mistake um, I mean, short videos on YouTube, I mean, really, I, I don't get it, really. I mean, unless you're going to basically happen to film a couple of drunks in a pub knocking seven bells of crap out of each other or someone uh, involved in road rage where they're ramming someone with their car or some poor sod who basically slips over on the ice, which seems to be what short videos are all about. That seems to be what YouTube want. Um, yeah, just showing someone's demise. Anyway, I did a short video. It's a waste of time. It'll get about 100 views. But let me just show you that clip now. This this is a small clip of what I recorded. Uh, the trade down to Bravo is at 10 level 80. That's the 130 echo, 10 level 80. That's the 130 echo. So I was quite impressed by that. So I thought what I'd do is I'll do another video, and this time I'm going to attach, which I'll do in a second, this longer telescopic whip antenna, which should help the radio. Now, a few of you. Um, when I said that I didn't think the radio made a great, a particularly great scanner, a few of you said, yeah, I, I think it's OK. Um, it's OK, yeah, it is It is OK, but it is quite slow in, it, in its scanning, and I think that's down to the step rate of the radio for a frequency scan. It's set by default at uh, 25 kilohertz. It probably needs to be a little bit higher, I think, the aircraft band by memory is about 100 kilohertz. I think that's their their, their channels. Um, the only other way to do it to make it faster 
is to program each frequency in the memories. Now the radio's got 200 memories, which is which is fine. And also, which is also good, um, the standard version of this Retivest, and I assume it's the standard one with the uh, UVK5, comes with preset scan bands. Um, which is pretty good actually. The aircraft one on this one, it goes from 108 to 136 megs, um, which is a little bit broad. I, I personally would have set it at about 118, yeah, maybe to 136, but 118. And because it scans up um, in 25 kilohertz, it's quite slow. Let me just give me a demonstration of my very old Com Comtel scanner, which is just up here or out of camera. Let me just show you what a proper scanner looks like and how that works. So this is a very old uh, FM scanner. There's really not a great deal on FM anymore. And as you can see now, this is going through its program memories. There are about 500 channels, and this is the speed that it goes through all of the frequencies, and this is what it, this is what it picks up. So as you heard there, you're, you're getting comms come through probably one every 10 seconds, that, that, that's another one. Due to the nature of the slow scan on this, um, what, what I'm going to do in a moment is I'm going to set this up in front of the camera because I've got a few errands to run, it's my day off work and I've got a few things to do, and I'm going to let it run for an hour and then we'll see what uh, comms it picks up on the airband over a period of an hour. But that, with the preset uh, memories, that will pick up more in two minutes than that will in an hour. And that's the difference between an old-fashioned dedicated scanner and the Retivest. So, like I said, already built into the standard firmware is, I think it comes up as F2, it's broadly the aircraft band on AM. Now what would be nice, and I can't see a way of doing this without any mods, but at the moment the radio has got 200 memories, which is pretty pretty generous really, but although it's a dual band radio, so you've got two sets of A and B, two sets of uh, frequency bands, I can't see any way to split the memories. So, for example, it would be quite nice to have all of your 16 PMR memories up on band A, and in band B, where you've got your aircraft memories, you could then go ahead and, you know, go from, say, I would say 118 megs up to 136. That would be where I get my aircraft. Um, and then if you put in, I don't know, let's say 25 memories around those frequencies, it would probably scan quicker. But it all seems to um, go into one memory bank. So everything, those, whatever you put in, if you put in 128, it will scan 128. That's a bit of a shame, really. I haven't seen any way to change that. If, if you do happen to know if there's a way of splitting the memories between A and B, if you let me know in the comments, I'd be really pleased to do it. So let me just zoom out a little, little bit here. So this is a standard antenna that comes with it. It seems to be quite a decent antenna. I'm going to swap that out for... That's going to go on the floor. No, nope. going to swap that out for this uh, telescopic whip, which is pretty much what you would have got back in the day on a handheld scanner, which uh, they're, they're quite good. I mean, you pick, still pick up a handheld scanner for about 40 quid on eBay, but there's really not a lot to listen to. So there we go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this downstairs, put it in front of a window to give it a best possible chance, and then I will set it on scan for an hour, and then we'll see what comes in. We'll only get little tiny clips of AM communication. I, I believe the em emergency channel on, a, on, a, on aviation is 127.5 AM megahertz. So 127.5, so that's probably the one you want to monitor if, if an aircraft declares an emergency, but that is very, very rare. I've never heard one. Scanning begin. Okay. 
Daniel Romeo with his passing 3,800, climbing 6,000 feet on the Orchid One Julia. There you go. I mean, it wasn't too bad, was it? it? It did take a long time. That was an hour's worth of recording, so it gives you an idea of what it's missed, really. Um, as I say, if, if there's maybe a way of changing the scan rate to 100 kilohertz, that might speed it up and do away with the 108. Start it at about 118. That might help. It's still not as good as a dedicated scanner, but it's nice that it's got it straight out of the box without messing about with any uh, firmware updates. As I say, you know, you've got the PMRs, you get the PMRs in and you've got the air band and it's something to listen to. So I think that's about as far as I can take the radio with the standard settings as they are. I, I will flash the firmware, I will give it a update. Um, hopefully I won't brick it. I'm not quite sure which one I want to use at the moment. I have been looking at uh, some of the programs that you can do. I'm not quite sure. I, I think what I want to do is just get it maybe receiving CB. Um, so yeah, so it goes from there. Be quite useful, but I say not sure. Anyway, if you want to like, you know, recommend me a firmware update that I can flash this a, 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 a stable one. I don't really want to brick it. <laughs> I still want to get a bit more life out of it before I brick the radio. Incidentally, I, I did contact Retivest and I said, look, you know, a lot of people that are going on to buy your radios, they're, they're going to be um, flashing them almost straight away. They're going to do um, sort of firmware updates. Would, would you be able to supply the standard firmware? Could you leave a link maybe on the buying page that if they do brick the radio, they could just install the standard firmware? And they said, well, we wouldn't actually put it on the, the home page because that's going to confuse people. But if, if people buy the radio and they do have a problem, if they contact our support, we're quite happy to send you a link so that you could get this radio back to its standard firmware, which I, th I think that's fair enough, really. So I think that's it for this video. So stay tuned, and um, the next one I'll, I'll try and get this working on CB. I've got other stuff in the shack. I've got the uh, ATS20 Plus here just come in. So I'm comparing that currently to the older ATS20, and off the bat, I can tell you straight away that they've really improved the encoder on this little receiver. It feels so much nicer than the old one, which went wrong, and uh, I think it's pretty much the same encoder that comes with the ATS25. So that's a good that's a good improvement. I also have downstairs. I haven't even opened it. I've also got the new ATS25, which um, has the Morse code decoder built into it. So in a later video, we'll be testing that. And I've got a few indoor loop antennas to test for receive as well. So lots of stuff coming up. I need to get on with it. But anyway, that's about it for this one. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. There is the thumbs up from old Fred in the Shed. If you get a second before you go, just hit me a thumbs up down below. Any comments on this radio, like I say, I'm not a technophobe, but if I can help you, I will point you in the right direction. But that's it. Please, please, please stay safe. Look after each other. Keep warm because it's bloody freezing right now. And I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Oh,